Welcome back to another Workflow Wednesday. I am your host, Fusion Phil, over here at JitCAD Cam. This week, we're going to cover something that I think a lot of people don't know that they have or something that they forget about as they work inside of Fusion's manufacturer workspace, and that is WCS probing. That's right. If you have a base license of Fusion 360, you actually have access to being able to probe your work offsets inside of Fusion. So let's go ahead and jump in and see how we can do that. So as you guys can see here, I have a part file opened up. If you want to work along on your end, that's perfectly fine. And you could actually open this part directly from the cam sample area down here where it says probing strategies. Now, once you get that file opened up, you're going to notice I've actually cleared everything out. Just makes it a little neater and nicer to work with. I would suggest you guys keep the original tool paths inside there. This will allow you to use those as a reference on top of anything that I give you today or possibly overlook. So first and foremost, I'm creating a brand new setup. I would also on your end if you're following along. Again, I like my XYZ. I just don't like its location. So let's get it moved out of the way. And I'm going to stick with the stock box as we go. Now, the very first thing I always like to do when I work with WCS probing is one, I need to go to the correct tab of where it's at. And that's under the inspection area. Now, Autodesk, if you're watching my video, one thing I would recommend is maybe we should move WCS and the inspection routines over into the milling area most commonly found. Now, with that probe WCS, like all tool pass of Fusion, you have to give it a tool. Now, the tool I'm going to use is I'm going to go into the Fusion library and I'm going to pick up a actual probe out of here because it's got default speeds and feeds. It's also just a six millimeter jewel. So if you're using a Renishaw probe, this is a super common tip that basically comes default. From there is if you're already seeing red down here in this window, again, I would recommend go back, edit your tool and add your speeds and feeds before you get a zero feed rate error. Now. The geometry part of the probe WCS is completely different than anywhere else inside of Fusion. And I say that because when you're working in a mill, your geometry is kind of your XY location. Same with your lathe, you have your geometry, which is more radii, again, working in that X axis type of theory. Here, we're gonna see that everything we're gonna do is gonna be commanded by a surface, right? So running through these menus real quick so you guys know is you have either the model or the stock that you wanna probe, the surfaces you wanna probe, What's going to happen is your probe type is actually going to change. And this is like the cycle that it's going to run or the feature you're probing will also update this. But from there, we're also going to be able to tolerance and edit some other things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say, I want to probe the stock and I'm just going to pick the top surface. And right off the start, we're getting an XY rectangle. Let's go ahead and move this out so we can read these. So we got that rectangular boss that we're probing. Well, in my opinion, I always like to pick up Z. That way I don't crash my machine, of course, right? So at the lowest level possible, that is nothing more than what we need to do to pick up our Z axis, right? So now we could go in and do another probe WCS, keeping our probe alive, again, doing stock. And now in my opinion, once I find Z, this is where I like to pick up my X and Y after the fact. Again, I'm using the exact same surface. I'm just changing my probe type to pick up X, Y. And what that looks like from a top down, Again, we're doing that XY boss, picking up our rectangle. Now, the neat thing about doing this in Fusion is, is because my work offset is over here in the corner, Fusion is gonna output whatever those dimensional shifts are to pick up our probe on the XY axis. Again, this is very quick as you're seeing. I'm not really adjusting or messing with much, but just like so, you can see that I have that quick ability to go in and pick up center of the stock but still keep my work offset in the corner, right? Now, this gets much fancier. So let's say you're a little bit more of a traditional kind of person. You wanna probe the exact corner that we're using for a work offset. Again, we're probing the stock in our setup one kind of idea, picking my two corner faces that I wanna probe, and just like that, we have now defined picking up that corner. Now, if you wanted to shift this out a little bit, feel free to with changing your approach, right? So let's say we go to a three inch approach, but keep in mind the shift here is going to be almost six inches, three inches away from our actual location of our origin or the corner at which we've selected. So sometimes you may go too large with this. And as you're noticing, we could have an over travel at the machine problem, or in this case, we could actually hit something else that's in the way. So in most cases, I don't like to pick up a corner unless I absolutely have to. However, as you can see, it's still completely doable inside of the probing menu 
in Fusion 360. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to go in and I'm going to show you another way to kind of pick up your X and your Y based on the outside edges of your part. And the first way I'm going to show you is we're going to go in and we're going to say, again, probe WCS. We're going to go to stock. And now this time I'm just going to pick a single surface. So there is the ability to do a single surface. And as you can see, we're picking up strictly just X axis right now, right? However, I can change this out to angular along X, which gives me two points. If you could see this here, let me get zoomed in. So we're now basing everything off two locations and we've switched to an angular kind of tolerance, right? So if we haven't really looked at this so much, but our initial X surface has a positional. Now, when we go to angle, we have an angular tolerance. Again, you could change the spacing to whatever you feel necessary. I'm gonna go five inches just so you guys can visually see the shift. Again, changing our approach to maybe one inch starts our part a little further backwards. And all we're doing now is we're probing the y-axis surface here in the x direction, right? So we're picking up the x-axis along that y-axis surface. Again, you have that ability to pick up both sides of the part the same way. Again, locating that corner if you wanted to. So if I was to reuse this, I'm going to control D, duplicate. Unselect my first surface, select my second surface, again, angular. And as you're seeing, if I highlight both, we can now pick up both the X and the Y axis based on two locations at each axis. And in the event that there was any angular type stuff, we have a tolerancing there that we're gonna see here shortly. So the next way to probe your X and your Y is gonna be more across the part versus just one side of the part. So again, we're gonna go based off stock. And now this time I'm gonna pick two surfaces that are perpendicular to each other. Actually parallel, I apologize, parallel. And what you're noticing now is we're going all the way across only in one axis, right? So it's calling it an X wall. This is not an X, Y boss anymore. It's just an X wall. Now, if you're like me and you run like a Kurt Weiss and your part shifts in the X axis, maybe you're not running a stop because the way you're machining, you need access or you're on a five axis machine, right? is we could just strictly pick up the x-axis, but now we could adjust, again, that over-travel and the approach. And what the difference between these two are is in the approach side of things is how far we start away from the surface. The over-travel is how far past that surface are we allowing, right? So this is a really neat feature to go in and say, hey, if it doesn't find a surface, then we should probably have an alarm, right? Or in this case, on my part, I'm gonna work with a saw cut blank. We all know how some of them saw cuts come out depending on who's running your saw, but maybe I want to allow, you know, in this case, a 200 thou positional tolerance, but this part needs to be within, you know, 625 of size. Oh, 525 today, we're going to change that out. Now, let's say our feature tolerance is out of spec, right? And what that means is in the event that it sees a position of more than 2 thou out from where it should be, we could actually do things like wrong position and wrong size that even. So based on those tolerances being met or thresholds being exceeded, we could actually alarm out the controller to tell the operator that there's a problem. So the cool thing about that is you have the ability to set them to whatever you want. Again, adjusting how far past your part you're going, how far into your part you could go. Again, maybe this is on a vacuum fixture and there's a lot of give to where it's gonna be. When it, Once it's vacuumed down, it's stable. But getting it in there and loading it perfect is something that is a trouble. Now, we've been doing stock probing at this point, and I'm going to shift gears to model probing. But before I do, I do have to tell you guys, we do have a giveaway going on at the end of this month for our 1,000 subscriber goal that we met. We're giving away a commercial seat of Fusion, also some support packages and some training hours to three lucky people that are going to be picked. I don't know if we're going to do this live or what we plan to do, but we will be picking out three people that have signed up. Again, that link's down below to get registered today for your seat of Fusion 360, as well as support and training. So let's shift gears. Let's go ahead and now like look at this as if we're in a setup two scenario. Our setup two scenario would mean we're actually probing the model, right? And as you can see on this part, and this is kind of why I like this part, is we have a lot of different weird features on this part. But the rules are still more or less the same when it comes to most of our cycles, right? So again, as if I go probe WCS, this time we stay model, and I'm just gonna pick the top surface of this island, right? 
So as you can see, we're now picking the outside or we're picking the Z axis. And this works whether it be a circle or a square, right? We have that ability to either say, you know, boss XY partial boss, which is kind of neat. And this is a neat feature that is newer. So if you're dealing with something that's actually not a full circular hole, this works both inside and outside or just a Z axis. Again, this is where I think a lot of people forget that you have so much power that you spent that money on that probe that we can use that probe in a lot of other ways. And trust me, there's no limit to that probe at Infusion anymore because you have surface inspect and other things in the manufacturing extension that I'm happy to show you in a one-on-one -on -one demo. But as you're seeing here is I have that ability to, again, go and pick up what's called a boss. And as you can see here, it doesn't matter if it's the square or the circle. It could even be a rectangular shape. Again, kind of a neat feature that you can pick up just any rudimentarily simple design, right? So from here, though, we can actually change things up. We can also do inside diameter type stuff, right? So again, based on that cylinder face, you have that ability to pick up the inside of that cylinder. We can also go into something that's rectangular. Now, what you're going to notice is, Again, just like on the outside, we can pick up a corner inside. And all that math is being calculated, again, from this location back to where my WCS is in the post processor. Now, we can go a little further than this. Again, we can actually go to two opposing surfaces, or we can go to all four surfaces, again, picking up center. Now, what you're getting here is something new, right? So again, we're getting a hole with an island. Again, your menus change based on the surfaces that you're giving to Fusion, which means I can change the probe type a lot of times. I have more than one option. So in this case, I want to save the cycle time. I don't have an island in the middle here to jump over. But as you're seeing is we now have that ability to pick up the center of a rectangle and adjust our work offset over here in the corner to whatever it needs to be in order to incorporate our machining. Now, again, we could go to another feature. I like this boss over here just less surfaces for me to pick. But again, we could go to our inside surface. We could also go to that outside surface. You have full control over this with the island feature to skip over that lug in the middle and avoid causing any type of problem. Another neat thing here is just like most tool paths inside of Fusion, you still have the ability to utilize the retract heights and set them to whatever you want. Again, this is a great new add into Fusion. Me personally, the change of the height tabs irritated me at first, but I've started to fall in love with it. That being said, is we could still do a selected face. We could pick the top face here for it to jump over that island. Again, we visually get to see the lowest point is that green line of the probe tip. Now, in my opinion, if you're going to do this, we're going to go ahead and select the highest of our surfaces for our clearance. Again, we don't want to slam that probe into anything. If you haven't crashed a probe or seen a photo of a probe, I'm going to throw one up here real quick. Actually, it's on this side of me, right? Throw one up here real quick to show you what you don't want to happen. The nice thing is, is because we're doing this all digitally before making it to the machine, we're saving all those chances of crashing a probe, but we're also reducing scrap and mismachined parts based on probing routines. So this is all features that I absolutely love when we talk about probe WCS. Again, these are rudimentary circles and squares, right? Well, it goes further than that. So my favorite thing about this is we're going to go ahead and start a brand new path because I've changed some stuff. But what happens when you get into some features like this cross section or this angular feature? Again, we can still pick our work offset up based on those surfaces. And again, you could actually do some things like a long X or a long Y, right? So we can go in in any direction and hit that surface to be able to achieve, again, what it is that we need for probing. Again, going inside this guy's feature right here, we may not want to go along Y, we want to go along X due to clearance reasons. But again, you can pick up that surface, you can set some tolerances, and you can alarm out the machine if there's going to be a problem. Now, I'm going to pivot gears here real quick, and I'm going to turn off the stock so you guys can see this. So I've showed you a lot of things of what it can do. Let's look at a few things that it cannot do and some of the workarounds for it, right? So for example here is if I do a probe WCS and I want to jump over something like this island here from this surface to this surface, this is one of the things Fusion cannot do in probe WCS. The good news is we have surface inspect and other tools part alignment to be able to do this, but that is one of the main features. Again, you could still do inside corners. You could still do outside corners. 
Another one that I commonly get asked is, okay, Angular, right? Can I do a corner Angular? No, you cannot. We would have to still routinely set this up as two different probing cycles, right? So split the X and split the Y up into two different features and be able to achieve that. Again, you cannot do inside or outside corners. You cannot jump across the part. You cannot do what I would refer to as an island over those features. And this is about your only limitation other than in your Z world, you cannot actually do angular faces in Z. We can always do angular faces here in Z in other ways. Again, here's a good example of one other thing you cannot do, which is you cannot actually do XY because there is no XY square surfaces. They're at that 45 degree clock position, which again is not achievable inside of Fusion. Now, let's go back to a few more things that I think people don't realize. Now, we've talked about just doing simple shapes like rectangles, right? We've talked about doing angular faces, but you, did you know you could actually jump across features? This is, again, one of those things that I think a lot of people miss out on when they think about this is how am I going to actually probe my part, right? So as you can see here is by picking a surface here, I'm lucky these two faces are square. It's automatically defining the surface here. But if I pick these two surfaces, I could actually kind of go anywhere in this part to pick up two perpendicular uh, parallel two parallel surfaces allowing me to always set whatever it is for that x dimension in this case or if i wanted to shift gears into y again i have that ability to go in y now another thing that i really like is let's say we're going to probe this cross here i have that ability to move this point to just about anywhere i want so if you're looking for a specific location to actually use this part so I could actually drag this down. Hold on here. My fusion needs to be moved around a little bit. There we go. I can actually set this point anywhere on that surface. Again, if I'm concerned about being too close to a wall, or maybe I have some rust machining happening in that corner, and I don't want to worry about that type of stuff. So again, there's a lot of different ways to manipulate the probing routines to get the outcomes and the strategies that you need and the strategies that you want when it comes to setting up your work. As always, guys, that concludes this video. I hope you have a great rest of your day as well. Don't forget to like, follow, comment, subscribe to my YouTube channel and my content so that we can get this shared out to more and more people. As always, have a great rest of your day.